Hi there. Uh, so today we are going to have a look at a native messaging service for Google Chrome so you can control Chrome through C Sharp. And just to give you uh, an example of what it can do, um, these are all the commands currently implemented. Um, so we can get all the window IDs, we can get all of all the tab IDs. As you can see, I've got all these tabs open here. Um, if you've got multiple windows open, you can get the tabs for that specific window. You can open a window. So if we go to google.com, you can see there it opens up. Um, we can open a tab. So you see there that window we opened was Windows 651 and tab 652. So if we put in Windows 651, and we do a, another one, let's go to my site. You can see there it opens up a new tab in that window. And um, you can change the tab URLs. So let's change that tab we just did. Let's go to BBC, not good, you can. So we change that. And that hasn't worked. I think we might have to put the HTTP in. There we go. So Needs to put the HTTP in. Um, you can get the URLs from any tab. So if we do tab 656, we should get BBC back, which we do. We can close a window. Well, let's close window 651. You can see that's gone. You can close a specific tab. I won't bother showing that. And you can also focus window. So our first window, which was 26. If we, oh, if we type in 26. You can see there it brings it into focus. Um, so just for a quick overview of how this all works. First of all, let's uninstall it. Um, so you can download you can download the extension uh, from my website here. The link will be in the description. And so you can download the installer. And then once that's downloaded and installed, you can create a new project and you can reference this library here, my Chrome control library. Uh, so if I show you in here. And then this library provides all the methods that you need to be able to communicate with the native messaging service. Um, so the file, the installer you'll download is this one. Uh, so you just accept it. Oh, first of all, before we install it though, if we open Task Manager, so you can see on the Google Chrome, it's just a bunch of Chrome processes running. Um, and then if we install this, so you can see there it's, Add it in. We did get a message up saying it's been installed. Do you want to enable it? So let's make sure it's enabled. And then if we go back to Task Manager, you see once it's enabled, then we, th we can then get this console window host running. And you can also see there's the application, the Chrome native messaging service. And now what that's doing is that's running the console application in the background. And that console application is, you can communicate with it using the named pipe client stream which is what this library does. And then, so in my demo application here, as uh, we've got all my commands, you can see all I do is I call the library and I just pass in the parameters I need. Um, if you need parameters as well, then they're just output within there. And then they all return a Boolean, whether or not they were successful. One thing about this though, is that your native messaging service only runs if Chrome is open. So if you close Chrome, you can't communicate with it. Um, so if Chrome's closed, you'll see all the commands like get window IDs. They're just, the won't work because it can't find this as a Chrome. Now the Chrome control library doesn't do this. You need to implement this yourself because I imagine different people want to implement this in a different way. Um, but for me, I just, I check the processes. I see if there's anything called Chrome running. And if there isn't, then I know Chrome isn't running and I can't run my commands. Um, so what I do in that case, I've got one command with open window, whereas if it's not running, uh, then start a new process, you pass in the location of the Chrome executable, uh, you pass in the URL as the arguments. And then when you start that up, so let's open window. Again, let's go to my site. You 
you can see there it opens up Chrome with the command line arguments. And then once Chrome's open, then uh, native messaging service back and we can then c communicate with it as normal. There's our window ID. Um, so that's it for this video really. And just a quick overview of what you do if you want to be able to control Chrome. You can download the extension, you can download the uh, library, the DLL file, and you can control Chrome straight away. All the source code is available on GitHub though. Uh, so you can have a look at it all. Uh, it's all based on this repository by this guy. Um, oh, how's it gone? By this guy, a Newton Levy. Um, he's got everything you need to get going. Uh, my version is slightly modified. If you do look at my version though, there's one thing that won't be explained is the registry. Because this is all done when you install it from the installer. Um, so there's two things that you need to add in your... For Chrome, you can add stuff either as a HK current user or a HK local machine. But if you add it to the local machine and you check your registry keys, so this native message service makes sure it's registered uh, with Chrome in the registry. If it's going to check the local machine registry, this one, it needs to be running admin rights, which isn't ideal for this. Um, so we put everything in current user. Uh, so you need to add a key under native messaging host in this format, com.companyname.application.whatever. And that has a default key pointing to a manifest file. And then the other thing that we added was because we want to install this ex extension in the installer. Because if you get it from the web store, it's on its own. It doesn't come with the installer. It's pretty much useless. Um, where have we gone? Uh, so what you do is you add the extension or you add a key under extensions with the ID of the extension. So I don't know if it says it here. I know it doesn't say on that page. Um, but you get an ID when you upload it to the web store and you just add an extension with that key and you create a value of update URL and you point it to Chrome's web store thing. Um, so they're the two things that you need to know. I say that other guys that are Newton Levy are based off, he's put all that in a bat file. Uh, so you can do that. And then just to show you as well as a quick demo of why I'm doing this is because I have an Alexa. So the motor is just run on my desktop, but I've got a little tiny computer in my living room, which is connected to a monitor in the kitchen. Um, so if I'm cooking, I want to be able to say stuff like, Ask D Labs to show me the recipe for spaghetti bolognese. Showing recipe and then it'll automatically bring bolognese. Chrome up and then display it on the uh, monitor in the kitchen. And then, then the other thing that I really like as well, but then on my TV, I might want to watch something on YouTube. So I can say, Ask D Labs to play Calvin Harris Giant on YouTube. Calvin and then it'll bring up another window and that. Um, and then you can close these as well. So if you want to stop watching it, you can ask it to close it. Um, so that's it for today. I say I'm going to go, I'm going to make another video where I go more in depth about how it all works and the code and the registries and the installer and everything like that. Um, but that's it for now. So yeah, if you want to control Chrome, have a download, have a play about with it and see what you can do. Thanks for watching.